And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Black man, go, go. Hey, hello, and welcome to episode 23 of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. Today's question is a really big one for hopefully avoiding idiocy because today's question is, what are some tips for new parents? Some of you that follow me, on Snapchat or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, know that I'm a parent. And those of you that also follow me on those social media apps also know that I'm a former idiot. So I feel that I am a pretty good person to ask what are some tips for new parents because there are some things that I did not do that I can't take back. And I wish I could and I can't. So hopefully... This will help you avoid some of the stuff that I did because there is a famous quote that says, a smart man learns from his mistakes or her, but a wise man learns from others' mistakes. So I think I'm smart, but I'm not wise or I wasn't wise. So tips for new parents. Everyone that has a kid, it's tense. Having a kid's tense. It's a lot of, it's a lot of responsibility and a lot of the questions that you're that you're thinking, you know, you're thinking about diapers and food and painting the baby's room and the names and this and that. And hopefully you're also thinking, am I going to be a good parent? And if you're thinking that, hopefully you're also thinking, uh, what steps can I do to be a good parent? Or how am I going to be a good parent? I think that's those are obviously more important questions. I mean, you want your kid to have diapers and stuff, but if you get diapers and a crappy parent. So these are some things that I think will help kind of help you with answering some of those questions. First, you start with the goal. What is the goal of parenting? I personally think that the goal of parenting is that your kid should be able to walk out of your house at 18 and be self-confident, have self-awareness, have problem-solving skills, have grit and humility. If they walk out with those five things... Your kid's going to be all right. And that's what your kid should have. If they walk out with more questions than answers, you maybe didn't prepare them correctly. I also firmly believe that if your kid is a loser, it is your fault. 100%. I have a seven year old daughter. And if she becomes a loser or a stripper or a porn star, Guess whose fault that is? That's my fault. I messed up. If you have a kid that's maybe an adult kid and they're a loser right now and you're going, oh man, my kid's a freaking loser. It's your fault. I'm sorry. I know that's harsh. I know it sucks to hear. But who else's fault is it? Theirs? They don't know any better. They're a kid. They're running through life. This is the first time through. You've already been through the stuff that they've been through. And you didn't help them navigate through those, through those waters. So it's your fault. There are two avenues you can take for parenting. Two. There's either the one-step approach or if you have some work to do personally, there's a two-step approach. Let's start with the one-step approach first. Hopefully this is you. So the one-step approach is you need to understand that you are not perfect. I hope you already know that. Now, some of us are, uh, some of us are more obviously perfect not perfect than others. If you catch my drift, I'm trying to say that nicely. But whatever your level of perfection or whatever your lack of perfection is, your child has some of that non-perfection in them. Your non-perfection comes from the dad's side and the mom's side. That's where it all comes from. may not be you specifically, but it's somebody on your line someplace. So the one step approach is you need to help them mitigate those imperfections, those tendencies, those character flaws, 
you need to help mitigate those so it doesn't come back to bite them in the ass later. That's your job as a parent. You know why it's your job? Because you have brothers and sisters, you have your parents, you have your grandparents, and you have you. You've seen how personalities, how they can come together and how they can manifest themselves, how those tendencies, how those shortcomings, however you want to look at it, you can see how those have manifested themselves in your in yourself and in your family. You need to be aware enough to understand that all those genes, all those imperfections are in your kid milling around someplace. Some things will cancel out. Some things may skip a generation, but the potential for whatever you see that you don't like in the in the rest of your family is in your kid, and it's your job to help mitigate those shortcomings. I would love to be able to just sit here. I'm sure a lot of people would love to. You'd be rich if you could do this. Just give you a handbook for how to raise your kid. But being a parent's flexible. You got to be able to adjust. I mean, you can't even raise two kids in the same household the same because it's two different kids. It's two combinations of those genes put together and they come together in different ways and you can't treat one the exact same way you treat the other one you have to be flexible you have to see okay what kind of tendencies are they showing what kind of tendencies could I see this how do I see this little personality thing manifesting itself later you got to be able to project out and this is something I think a lot of parents don't do is they don't project those little things that are like okay it's a little whiny kid and she's you know not sharing and doing this or whatever now, but at four, it's doable. But what does that look like when they're 18? What does that look like when they're 19? How does that project out? So you have to cut that crap off, nip it in the bud, because you're mitigating stuff like that from expanding and becoming something that's like that's not manageable. It's manageable now. It's manageable because they're little. And you had to project out for how's that going to be later on. If you're not able to help them navigate through all that stuff, then we're going to have the two-step approach. So you have to take this one-step approach and scoot that, which is helping them navigate through their imperfections. And now step one for you is you need to figure out your imperfections. You need to figure out basically what is wrong with me and really look at yourself. What's wrong with my family? And really look at them really, really carefully. And you are going to ask yourself some very difficult questions. And you can either choose, this is a make or break a moment for your parenting, for your kid's life and for you as a parent. This is make or break it right now. You have to ask yourself some very hard questions and you also have to answer them honestly. Very honestly. Because if you don't, you're never going to get to the root of it and you're not going to help your kid out. I promise you. So what are some questions you have to ask yourself? One, you can go to the big one, what's wrong with me? What do I suck at? What am I terrible at? Are you a bad listener? Are you lazy? Are you unhealthy? Are you fat? Do you drink too much? Do you still take drugs? Are you a cheater? Are you a liar? What are your problems? Those are things you have to ask yourself and really ask them and really answer them. I personally suggest a therapist. Why? For you in particular and I guess for me as well, uh, because you let your problems persist for this long, I don't trust you to be able to figure them out and take them seriously to fix them for your kid. So use have somebody help you. Go see a therapist. Find find a local therapist with like that's been doing it for a long time. You don't want to find some young. You want somebody with like a lot of experience and stuff. And there's a lot of really good therapists out there. If you happen to be in the San Francisco Bay Area and you would like a recommendation for a therapist, please hit me up in the, uh, the comment section or find me on Snapchat or Twitter and DM me and I will give you a fantastic therapist that you can talk to. And I've, we've gone to a couple different therapists. One was, if you guys have seen Mad Men or watched Mad Men, you remember the therapy sessions that Betty Draper went to where she would sit there and just talk about stuff and the guy would just go "Mm -hmm, mm-hmm mm-hmm and then how my guy was a little different was it's almost like he would take things that I was asking about okay why do I do this why do I do that and he was trying to find it in like my past 
And it felt like instead of really getting to the root of the problem and solving the problem, it's more like trying to find something to pin it on. So it's like taking something small that was insignificant and making it an issue, which is not, I don't think is healthy at all. And it's not helpful for crap. So if you find a therapist like that, lose the therapist. The type of therapy you should look for, the type of therapy that really works for me and really works if you're really trying to like, you're actually trying to do some work, it's called cognitive behavioral therapy or behavior, like they, they'll specialize in behavior modification. That's it. Because the thing you have to understand is kids take in everything. You can say anything you want to them, but they see you. They see you lie. They see you drink. They see you smoke. They see you cheat. They know something's weird. They know, they know when you're fighting. They know when you're not fighting. They may not say anything. They may not react, but they see it and they take it in. And you are teaching them by what you do and how you act and what you say. You're teaching them how to be a person. So if you suck, your kid's going to suck. No matter what you hope they turn out to be, no matter what you wish they are to be, if you suck, they'll suck, period. Sucky parent, sucky kid. Unless your spouse is so awesome that can offset your suckiness or your partner or whatever. Please remember that. You suck, they suck. So figure you want to be a good parent? You want your kid to be walking out that door with confidence, walking out that door with grit. You know that they're going to hit problems, they're going to have issues, and they're going to hit them head on, and they're going to take them on, and they're going to figure them out, and they're going to know themselves well enough to put themselves in positions to win and be successful. They're going to know their strengths. They're going to know themselves because you've taught them self-awareness. They're going to know how to get stuff done because you taught them grit and tenacity and problem-solving skills, and your kids are going to be awesome. If you want them to do that, you need to fix yourself first. You have to fix yourself first. You have to know yourself inside and out. You have to analyze your family. You have to analyze your partner's family too because they, you know, they're going to have their issues on their side too, and nobody's perfect. You can say, oh, my family totally messed up. Well, then you got a lot of analyzing to do because you got to be careful because all those genes are all mixed in there. And granted, environment, there's there's definitely a piece of the environment, but you are the environment. You are the thing that's going to create. You're molding a child into be, into being a, a positive and successful and wonderful adult. But you only get one shot to do that. You can mess that up. This is not like a, this is not, you can't put the reset button. You can try to make up time. You can try to change the narrative on maybe how you were when they were younger, but it's still there. And it's much, much better to not mess up in the first place and to really think ahead, think long term. How do I have to be now for my kid to be great later? You have to think that way. And, or you're going to come up short, and then they're going to come up short. And it's going to be on you, like it or not. I have read three books. I've read three amazing books. I guess I should clarify that. I've read way more than three books. But I've read three books that um, I'm starting to give to my friends who have young kids because they are so powerful not only for you as an individual, if you don't already think this way, and I think there's always room for improvement, but the way to approach your kids, you can instill these things in these books in your kids and just imagine the power of that. So there's three books. One is called Mindset by Carol Dweck. A second is called Grit by Angela Duckworth. And the third called The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin. So these are the books, right? Right here. And I will link to them in the show notes. But they all go together well. They kind of cross-reference sort of similar things, but they're very different in stuff that they're explaining. But it's all part of basically creating this, like, it's creating that 18-year-old that walks out the door and is ready to take on the world that is ready to 
put in the put in the work, that's ready to lace up their boots and is ready to kick ass and they have the confidence to do it. These three books, and I'm sure there's others, but these are my favorite books for this, will help you get your kid and get your household in the right mindset to freaking kick ass. And that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for total ass kicking. I can't stress enough the power of doing it right the first time. If you're listening to this because you messed up, like me, you realize how valuable not messing up would be. You realize as you're figuring yourself out now, as you're becoming better than you've ever been before, you're going to find yourself going, man, I really wasted a crap load of time not being on point. And that's the biggest thing when you have a kid is you as a parent need to be on point. You have to because this you are responsible for this life and you're responsible for creating a life for that person that is allowing them to be successful. And we live in a great time where there is access for pretty much everyone. There's access to everything. All you need is a phone and some like writing skills and you can pretty much attack anything. In the same token, there's also more access to stuff, which means if you're not in the right frame of mind and you're not in the right mindset, you could completely F yourself and your kids up because there's too much to get into. So if you are not aware of your weaknesses and you're not aware of your tendencies and you don't instill that in your kids and teach them the right values, teach them the importance of character and focus on their strengths and recognize their weaknesses and all those things, there's a huge, big, wide world out there that is going to swallow them up. So please do it right the first time. If you guys have any suggestions for books, I would love to hear them. Um, please put them in the comment section below. If you're enjoying these, please share them. Share them with your friends. Uh, subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on SoundCloud. Subscribe on, on YouTube. Leave comments in the section. Um, leave a review, please, on iTunes if, um, if you're enjoying this. And if you have any questions, please shoot them to me. I'm always looking for something that I think is going to help a wide, uh, wide range of people. And that's what this entire podcast is about. It's about helping people from one idiot to hopefully not another idiot. I'll see you guys on Friday. And she was like, huh? and he was like, nah. and we was like, what?